jam-packed week. And then, of course, sorry, I'm DJing five times. The 24th, the 25th, the 27th, the 30th, and the 31st. All back to, no, not back to back, like, you know, um, all concurrently happening along the next couple of weeks or so. So that's going to be a pretty stressful um, schedule, but something I'm looking forward to. You know, I've always had a dream of doing this kind of thing professionally, and now people are paying me, you know, nominal m- amounts of money, you know. It's not really for the money. It's more so for the exposure and for the experience of it. being able to do these sort of... Uh, being able to play out in front of people is uh, really hard to do um, because for the most part, you know, bars and clubs tend to have their people who they lock down and tend to use the same people again and again and again, which I, I kind of understand, but for a new DJ... Like myself or for somebody or for punters we want to hear somebody a little bit interesting it's a little bit uh, it could be a little bit frustrating because you get to hear we don't necessarily get to see new people you just have to hear the same old same old because you know they have a relationship with the bar owner or the booking person so it's harder for someone like me to kind of get your foot in the door but as with all things once you do get your foot in the door you just have to fucking work your ass off to make sure that you don't get out of it right that you that you stay in it for instance and also the good thing about it is that even though people are quite clicky with who they um, bring in and stuff it can work to your advantage too because when you if you prove yourself that you know that you're good at what you do that you can handle yourself well that you can read the, the crowd well you can appeal to a wider audience those people will then go and recommend you to other people because you know there is a sh- it, as much as people like to say oh everyone's a dj that is very true but there's not as they, because everyone's a dj the talent pool is a little bit diluted there's not as many good djs so which is why you see for the most part the people that are performing at right at the top tier, right? The guys and girls who are playing now at Circo Loco and DC10, um, or Circo Loco DC10 or NIB for this whole season, the people that are going to be playing across all the main festivals, those five or those that 10 to 5% of DJs uh, are earning like, you know, the big, big, big bucks. And then the ones underneath are just, you know, kind of like, you know, just above what we're are kind of earning wise, you know, or maybe yeah, earning wise, maybe talent ability, but the top five to 10%, there is a reason why they're up there. Like, and you only have to check out a recent mix I listened to now with um Gerdy Anson at Boiler Room, you know, a DJ that a lot of kind of DJs are big fans of. He's the quintessential DJ's DJ. And that set he played recently, I think it was like an, a Belgian open air festival or something. Check it out. It's on Boiler Room YouTube now at the moment. It's really, really amazing. And then off the back of that, you've got the recent um mix with uh, Solomon. Uh he did uh he did a performance during I think a circ I think it's a French production company called Circa or Circle or something like that. Um they do like these amazing, amazing, amazing um uh gigs where they place them in some crazy scenarios there was one where they had them um, they had a dj playing in a chalet somewhere at the top of the french alps they have it in deserts they have them in castles and basically this video is a um a video of Solomon djing at a festival just as on the courtyards of a massive sort of like um palace or whatever it may be called so i definitely recommend check that out but the, when you see those guys play you rec- you realize okay cool there's levels to this shit but it's also you know that that again is another it's another version of what I'm going through, you know, because it's the same people playing in the same festivals. But there's a reason why because they know they bring the they bring the fucking pain. And if you if you're gonna if you're gonna book if you're gonna book the woman at the moment like Peggy Goo and those kind of people, uh, Amelia Lenz, Stark the Wit, you know they're gonna bring it right. They, there's no um, risk there. The Black Madonna, those kind of people, they, you know they're gonna the Honey Dijon. They're going to bring it regardless. So I think as annoying as it can be that it's hard to get in, you know, because everyone's kind of closing their doors. No one replies back to you message-wise when you try and reach out and see if you can get a little spot somewhere. I I understand too, right? You don't want to take the chance of going for some a stranger you don't know. They come in and they end up playing, I don't know, EDM for like four hours. And, you know, and I, and I can imagine how awkward it must be for a bar manager to go up to a DJ and tell them, look, what you're playing is shit. Can you change up a little bit? It can be a little bit difficult to do that. So I definitely understand where they're coming from. Anyway, um, what else is going on in my life? That's about it for the most part. Oh, I'm going to Paris is actually in the next couple of weeks too. That should be very much some fun. Oh, you know what's oh, you know what's happening actually? Um, forget Paris Junction too. So I'm going to that next next couple of weeks too. That should be fucking cool. Can't wait to for that to happen. I think Junction have just released the timetables as well for the festivals, um, which is awesome. They don't usually do that. Um, well, these kind of festivals, they usually take a while to release them because they want to make sure people buy tickets, right? So they kind of always withhold the set times. So people can buy tickets. They don't want anyone to just come and buy it. It's weird. London festivals and club nights resist releasing set times ahead of time because they don't want people just to buy tickets for to see the particular person they want to see. Strange, right? Um, they want to make sure they get the monies in. But then um, 
some places it's straight because I think for the most part, if you're gonna go, if you're gonna go, you're gonna go regardless. You're not you're not going just because you want to see a certain. You want to go see a collection of people. And person like me who's maybe a little bit more picky and would want to go see a particular DJ, I'm still gonna give you the money for the full nights of a party, right? Even if I want to see Ricardo Villalobos only play, or I want to see Ricardo Villalobos and Mercy Drum Ensemble, I'm still giving that festival the day ticket rate, right? I'm not just going there and purchasing a ticket for the two hours that that DJ is on. So I never understand that kind of thinking. Um, because you know you don't the other thing as well you'd never really get secret lineup um gigs in the uk that mu- that often because you know for the most part our licensing laws are quite shit so bars and nightclubs don't really have a big window to sell alcohol or to make money at the bar so they can't afford to have a secret lineup right they just can't afford it they have to let people know who's playing so the hope is people will get excited buy the tickets in advance and they'll sell out and then they already have covered a bit of their nut with the, on the gates and then they know they're going to get a lot of people coming in which is going to guarantee bar bar t- bar um takes gonna be really good so i get it but with festivals i don't understand it because the lineup's already released ahead of time anyway i know who's going to be playing and if i spot someone i like i'm going to buy a ticket anyway so it's like you've already made your money so I don't really understand why they don't release the set times. But anyway, that that is um another rant for another day. But um, Junction Two have uh, Junction Two have released their set time. It's it's, on, it's part of an app that I just downloaded recently, just now actually. It's called um, what's it called? It's called Woo or something. It's called Wov W O O V Wov Wov. But yeah, Junction Two is happening. I can't fucking wait. Uh, Junction 2 London's Hidden Festival Friday the 7th uh, and Saturday the 8th of June Boston Manor so just west of London if you're familiar with the area and the lineup is fucking awesome the Friday lineup is probably one I'd probably want to go to most out of this I got tickets for the weekend but if I was going to decide and say you know what's the time I want to go just going to see the Friday main stage you've got Bicep um, Daphne Giles Peterson Mr. G and Fort Remu um, on the bridge You've got Ricardo Vera, Low Boss, Craig Richards, Dixon, DJ Coz, uh, Joe Jobis, and Says. On the stretch, Fonica stage, you've got Honey, Mercy, and Drum Ensemble, Jeremy Underground, Carissa, and Peach. On the warehouse, you've got Daniel Avery, Object, DJ Stingray, um, Umfag, uh, back to back with Volvex, Batu. In the woods, you've got Ben UFO, Core Super, Shanti Celeste, um, uh, Roxy Moore, and Rini. And on Saturday, you've got some great back-to-backs. You've got, on the main stage, you've got Marcia, Marcia Pex going back-to-back with Taylor of Us. You've got Mason Pex on his own and Taylor of Us. And you've got Max Cooper and Val. Then you've got Adam Bayer, Richie Horton at the bridge um, with Joseph um, Capriati, um, Ida Inberg, and Bart Skills. Then the stretch, uh, Ida Inberg is really good as well. I recommend you check her out. She's amazing. She's uh, one of the female DJs out there hasn't really been getting as much love as everyone else at the moment. I'm not sure what's going on, but she's awesome. I forgot who she's, who's the other DJ she's married to. I forgot his name. But yeah. Um, then on the on the stretch sound stage on Saturday, they've got Loco Dice, Apolina, Lauren Lasug, and uh, Gene on Earth. That's going to be fucking loud as fuck. <laughs> Warehouse venue, they've got Emily Lenz, Dax J. Then there's Pika, Etap Kyle, Mogan, and the Woods, they've got Sonia Monet. Nicholas Lotz, Craig Richards, San Proper, and Voitman. So yeah, um, just absolutely mad, mad, mad lineup. Like honestly, it's going to be probably one of the best ones um they've done of recent years. Again, the opportunity to see someone like a Ricardo Villa Lobos, Anna Dixon, and the Metroplex, and a Tale of Us, like all playing in one lineup. Adam Bayer, Richie Horton, like we have, haven't seen in Yonks. It's fucking insane. So I'm really looking forward to seeing that. So again, if you're an electronic music fan and you're in and around the area and you're there and you see my massive head, say hi, give us a wave. I'll be there throwing shapes with the rest of you absolute psychos.